Everyone loves a good boss fight, right? From start to finish, these experiences can push players to their limits and even far beyond, coaxing greatness out of players with unique mechanics and concepts. But as with any good boss, if you thought that just one good encounter was enough, then you might want to think again, as the bosses on this list, well, they chain their defeat into battling another. Jesus, give us a moment to catch our breath. Moments like this are often completely unexpected, and because you've spent the last hour memorizing the previous boss's strategy, and moves means that you'll almost certainly die to this second boss within about five seconds. I know we all love the rush of adrenaline you get from finally vanquishing a vexing villain, but this was well, like a bloody overdose. So with this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 challenging video game boss fights that led directly into another one. Number 10. Sekiro – Shadows Die Twice – The Guardian Ape now, Shadows Die Twice might at first seem like a rather pretentious subtitle for a game about slashing stuff to pieces, but it turns out that it actually has layers of complex poetry, because apparently things will literally not stay dead. I mean, just ask the Guardian Ape boss, who also dies twice. Or three times, actually. This protective primate guards the Lotus of the Palace, so players will need to defeat him in order to progress, and he is nothing if not a formidable foe. But thankfully, he has two things that undermine his ferocity. Firstly, he's got a bare bottom and that is just plain embarrassing, but secondly, and more importantly, he's got a giant blade sticking through his neck which hinders his progress. And with some determination and skill, you can relieve this pressure by using this to lop this badass baboon's melon clean off. Whew, oh, that was actually pretty tough. Well, time to relax, right? Right? Oh god, he's getting back up! Yes, that's right, thanks to a horrible demon centipede inside this ape, he's back for one more round. Something that you could have never expected on your first playthrough, and now it's using the bloody sword that was stuck in him as a weapon. I hope you kept some healing items. Number 9. XCOM 2 – War of the Chosen – The Chosen Strongholds War of the Chosen is an utterly fantastic expansion pack for the equally fantastic XCOM 2, and introduces three alien warlords who will stalk your troops throughout the campaign, showing up every few missions to absolutely derail your plans of restoring humanity's grip on the planet. You might think that giving them a spanking would be enough to deter them, but not in the slightest, because in order to take them down permanently, you'll have to assault their strongholds and destroy the weird sarcophagi that keep them alive. In fact, this strange device resurrects the Chosen again and again, so you end up having to defeat another one, and another one, and another one. Jesus, who designed this? DJ Khaled? It's a battle of endurance. Your squad of squishy soldiers versus a fearsome alien warrior who will keep coming back from the grave. It seems inevitable that you will lose, especially when you can only hurt the device that's resurrecting them when it's resurrecting them. Yet this is the joy of XCOM. It is brutally hard from start to finish and will make you pray so hard to the gods of RNG that you might as well start a bloody cult. Number 8. Super Mario Odyssey – The Dark Side Boss Rush if you think that you're done with Super Mario Odyssey after beating the main campaign, well, think again. Head to the dark side of the moon and you'll be greeted once again by the Brudels, wedding planner rabbits with a horde of harmful headgear. You've defeated them once before, so this should be easy, right? Well, this time, you're not just fighting one of them, you're fighting each, one after the other, and doing so with just a single life. First comes Topper, whose concerningly large hat collection can cause utter chaos, but you know what? He is no match for Cappy. Next up is Harriet, a bunny with a barrage of bombastic bombs to bully you with, and straight after that is Spewart, whose slimy attacks make for a sticky situation, and finally comes Rango, whose hats are utterly brimming with blades. Whew, that was one brutal boss rush, but you know what? It's not over yet. Now Mario has to defeat the fifth and final boss in a row, the towering Robo Brood. You've already fought this mechanical monstrosity back in Bowser's Kingdom, but it'll still put up a fight, especially since you've had your health whittled down by the Brutals. If Mario can take down the Robo Brood once and for all, he'll be rewarded with a multi moon as a prize for dealing with this lunar lunacy. Number 7. Doom 2016 Hell Guards so what do you actually reckon that hell is like? I mean, lots of fire, probably. Torture chambers, definitely. Screams of agony, check. Well, how about an oversized leech piloting a mecha suit made of bones? 
Uh, well, that's just plain weird, but say hello to the Hell Guard. At the end of the Necropolis level in Doom 2016, the Doom Slayer squares off against such a beast, and you will need to use all of the skills that he's learned so far to take it down. With its massive mace and energy shield, it can batter you quickly and banter you off even quicker. Once you've whittled down the Hell Guard's sizable health bar, you'll probably be feeling pretty proud of yourself. But don't pat yourself on the back just yet. As soon as the first Hell Guard is defeated, two more rise from the depths to take revenge, and you'll have to fight both at once. You better have that BFG fully loaded, otherwise this triple threat of a boss rush is going to make you feel like absolute hell. Number 6. Shovel Knight – Battle Royale at the end of the penultimate level of Shovel Knight's main campaign, you come face to face with the Enchantress's armored army, the Order of No Quarter. You'll have to fight each member of the Order in quick succession in a series of boss battles with no time to rest in between. That includes Plague Knight and his explosive bombardment, Tinker Knight and his giant mech, Treasure Knight and his grappling anchor, and many more. Safe to say, it's an array of variant villains that you don't want to underestimate by themselves, let alone when they're coming at you one after another. Fortunately, Fortunately, your progress is saved when you die, so you don't have to start over from the very beginning, but the order of bosses is randomized every time to keep you on your toes. And each boss has their usual massive HP bar and their full set of moves intact, so you will need to use your mastery of the shovel to bury them all. Number 5. Undertale, Asgore and Omega Flowey as your journey in Undertale seemingly draws to a close, there's one final creature to contend with, Asgore, the king of the underground. Asgore puts a twist on the Undertale formula as well, destroying the mercy button so you can't just use your charm and charisma to talk him out of it, you have to fight for real. Doing all you can just to survive against Asgore's merciless onslaught, it is a final reckoning so intense that nothing could possibly follow it, except something does. Once you bring Asgore to the point of death, he begins to realize the error of his ways and apologizes for forcing you to fight him. Just as you're about to grant him mercy though, that weedy weed Flowey shows up, kills Asgore, crashes your game, and forces you to fight him in his terrifying final form. Having only just endured an exhausting fight against Asgore, the battle against against Omega Flowey is overwhelming, and to begin with, it feels utterly hopeless. But if Undertale has taught us anything by this point, it's that determination always wins. If you can stay tenacious throughout this double whammy, you're a worthy human indeed. Number 4. Cuphead – King Dice Hold on to your handle, Cuphead, because things are about to get dicey. The Devil's right-hand man and casino manager King Dice is a formidable foe who can only be taken on once the player has completed his deadly board game, which involves fighting a slew of mini-bosses. And if you're very unlucky, you'll have to face a fair few on the path to punching this guy in the face. Each of these mini-bosses is casino-themed, of course, and they're randomized each playthrough, so you're never quite sure which one you're going to get. That's the roll of the dice, baby, and even when you get to the end of the board, and the chips are down, you'll still have to fight King Dice himself, and he is an absolute ass because you have to parry the pink cards while dodging the others to build up your power meter and then use the precious time that you have between his attacks to unleash your might on the man himself. It would be notoriously challenging on its own, but adding in this boss rush as well? Jeez, that's, that's a bit unfair. Number 3. Crypt of the Necrodancer – Dead Ringer and the Necrodancer Crypt of the Necrodancer is a groovy roguelite that has you dungeon crawling to the beat of an infectious soundtrack. If you're playing as the default character Cadence, your ultimate goal is to defeat the Necrodancer himself, but you can't just skip to the hit single here without first going through the dreaded Dead Ringer, man with a big old mallet who wears a big old bell on his head. But he's much more intimidating than he looks. In fact, at first he seems almost invincible. You'll need to use all your movements and misdirection abilities to outwit him, ring all the bells in the room while fending off hordes of enemies and then send him charging into a gong at the top of the stage. This ends the fight. So not to spoil the events after, but the pair actually team up to take on the Necrodancer together, which introduces a new mechanic of you having to control two characters at once against an incredibly difficult foe, all the while trying to stay on beat. Whew, hope you've got good rhythm, friends. Number 2. Azura's Wrath – Wizen this cross-genre anime-styled action game pits protagonist Azura against a pantheon of fellow demigods, and if that's not a recipe for some incredible boss fights, I do not know what is. The most incredible among them, though, is the increasingly enormous Wizen, who Azura has to fight three times in a row. First, you fight him at regular size, which is still pretty big, mind you, and you'll have to be agile if you're going to dodge his projectiles for long enough to get some damage in. Eventually, with victory seemingly secured, Azura punches Wizen off a cliff. Job done, right? Well, that 
that is until a burst of light shines forth from beyond the cliff's edge and wise and rises from the chasm below as a hundreds of feet tall behemoth towering above everything else. And if you thought that was big, just wait until his third and final phase where wise and expands to the size of a bloody planet. Calling upon the power of the mantra held within him, the already oversized overlord becomes a true god. But through sheer force of will and obviously the strength of his fists, Azura is able to destroy wise and once and for all. Whew. Maybe take a breather after that one. And number one, The Binding of Isaac. It lives and hush. The Binding of Isaac is a very challenging game, but it's a well-known fact among the player base that with the right loadout, almost any boss will drown in Isaac's tears, lasers, acid globs, or knives, or whatever else in short order. But that's not the case with Hush, one of the game's most challenging adversaries who can only be fought directly after another boss fight, It Lives. Now, It Lives is a harder version of Mum's Heart, or Mom's Heart if you want to get American about it, and only if you manage to reach it and kill it within 30 minutes, which is no mean feat in itself. Only then will a mysterious opening appear. Jump through the ominous opening like the reckless renegade you are, and you'll find yourself in a spooky new location simply titled Question Mark. There are a few supplies to restock yourself with, but only if you have the requisite keys to access them. Then it's straight off to the next boss battle with barely a chance to let your tear ducts re-moisturize. Hush is a horrifying creature that takes the form of a distorted face pushing through the floor. It looks like it's in agony, and soon you will be too because Hush scales to your damage output Output. So even if you've been arrogantly breezing through this run-up until this point, well, Hush will shut you up. It's the very definition of bullet hell. And there we go, my friends. Those were 10 challenging video game boss fights that led directly into another one. Hope you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. If you want to chat to me further about all things to do with video games or anything else, you can do so over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero. Or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. But before I go, my friends, I just want to say one thing. We detailed today a lot about video game bosses that just went into another one and another one and another one. You know what? It became overwhelming. And you know what? Sometimes we can do that to ourselves with our own mental issues. We can let them pile up and become bigger problems than we intended them to be. So what I want you to do right now is make sure that you are speaking to people about these things. Make sure that your friends, family, professionals in the support industry, make them aware of what's going on in your life because these people care about you and want you to do well. Don't go trying to carry all of these burdens on your shoulders because trust me, you don't need to be alone throughout all of this. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. 